Transgrid have approached our company to come out here and do some ecological studies. That means it's looking at vegetation communities and the flora and fauna that populate those areas. So this is classic Mallee habitat. There's not a lot of understory and that's because animals are being grazing here. The elements that we're trying to establish is what's the status of threatened species in this area and what's the quality of the vegetation in which they could occur here. There's a number of different traps that we use for targeting different species. We do use a pitfall and funnel line. Any animals that come through hit the fence and either go into a funnel or into a bucket. This one is Bollinger's skink. Um, you can see the, the bright orange underneath his chin there, that male breeding flush. And this one here is a funnel trap. It's a bit like a potty mullet trap. You can easily look through it and see against the light whether there's anything in it. In this occasion, we haven't caught anything. We also put out a range of little box traps. The animal walks in and walks on the trap door and then the door flings shut and the animal's trapped inside. We place the traps uh, in shaded areas in case the morning sun might heat them up and make the animals too warm. We're also using remote cameras. Now those remote cameras are triggered by movement in front of them. Many of the animals that we have out in this harsh environment actually move around at night time, but with a headlamp really close to our eyes, we can actually pick up the retina of nocturnal animals. So what we're going to do is we're going to play some call playback to elicit a response from species that be a little bit harder to see. Now the barking owl gets its name because it actually sounds like a dog barking. We also have a range of mammals that make different noises. They react to territorial calls as well. Just had a micro bat fly over. The study that we've been conducting has been running now for about 15 months, probably around 100 kilometres. We've got six botanists out here and two fauna ecologists. It's really, really important to know whether threatened species are in locations like this so we can make allowances for their continued existence. 